this is Richard Schneider with Antennas Direct, and we're here in Las Vegas at the 2023 Consumer Electronics Show. And we're here to learn about one of the hottest technologies on the show floor. Believe it or not, it's over the air broadcasting, specifically next gen television. And there's a bunch of vendors here that are showing off next gen TV sets with the ATSC3 or next gen tuner built in. And we're going to come and talk about that, and we're going to learn a little bit about. Uh, the new standard in broadcasting. So come along with us at CES. Thank you. So we're here at the Hisense booth at CES where they're displaying their new UX models of next-gen televisions. So the UX series of Hisense televisions are integrated with the ATSC3 or next-gen tuning technology. So you'll be able to get over the air next-gen broadcasts on the new line of Hisense televisions, specifically their UX series. Hello, my name is Richard Schneider. I'm with Antennas Direct, but I'm not here to talk about antennas. I'm here to talk about next-gen broadcasting. We're here at CES, and one of the technologies that's generating the biggest buzz is next-gen broadcasting. And with me is the lady that's helping to reinvent broadcasting, Madeline Noland, who is the president of the Advanced Television Systems Committee. So Madeline, thank you very much for taking the time to visit with us. And did you imagine in 2023 that over the air would be cool again? <laughs> over the air was always cool. Well, actually, maybe not. Um, I do think it's really, really exciting what's coming to free over the air television and seeing the beautiful video, the interactivity, the advanced audio, immersive audio, personalized audio, all of this is very, very special. Um, you know, one of the things that I love about it is the voice boost. You can turn the dialogue up compared to the music and effects. A lot of people actually watch oh, TV with captions that. on because they're not hard of hearing, but they can't discern the dialogue okay. over the crowd noise or whatever else they're watching. So better video, better audio, new interactivity, more accessibility features, um, advanced emergency messaging, so all the things that broadcasters hold near and dear to serve the community. So there's some little Easter eggs that are kind of into the standard. Um, I have a, a fraternity brother who's a weatherman, and he was shocked to know that ATSC3, or Next Gen Broadcasting, will have the ability to actually turn on a viewer's television in the case of a, of a life-threatening weather emergency. That's right, so, yes. So, so is there a magic button that the weatherman can press and turn on and wake up televisions in the path of a tornado or? There is, there is. We, we call it the, the wake up bits. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they, those are built into the standard that uh, the broadcaster can do that. Now, of course, the whole ecosystem needs to be in, involved. So the television manufacturer would have to implement it and the broadcaster would be using it. But yes, the technology is available to do that. So this is going to save lives. It's more than just immersive audio and high dynamic resolution in 4K, but there's going to be some life safety benefits here too. Absolutely. And even without that wake up function, the ability to give people rich media about the emergency is critically important. What is the evacuation route? Where are the shelters? Where do I get water? What should I do next? Both in terms of when the storm or issue is coming, when it's happening, and after it's happened, how do you recover? Okay. All of that information is possible. All right. One of the uh, features of, of next-gen broadcasting that's going to be really near and dear to my heart is its resistance to interference. Now, I don't want to get too deep into the bits and the bytes, but you know, as antenna vendors, we get a, uh, we get maybe two to three hundred phone calls a day from customers, and the predominant problem people are reporting with the current broadcasting standard is dropouts due to interference. And ATSC three is going to be a little more robust with what we call multipath. Um, when, when, when an antenna gets a signal twice, but out of maybe out of phase or out of time a little bit. So would you be able to comment on that, are, are, uh, 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 that ATSC will give the viewer a more consistent and reliable experience? Well, certainly the ATSC 3.0 design is much more robust straight out of the gate. Um, I think that, um, you know, you, you not to get too technical, but it's 30% more robust okay. than ATSC 1.0. Now, one thing that's important to note, though, about the robustness of ATSC 
is that unlike ATSC 1.0, you had this many robustness settings. One. <laughs> With ATSC 3.0, you can actually change how robust you want the signal to be. Now, there's a trade-off, of course. It's a balance between how much data do you want to send and how strong do you want the signal to be. Okay. So if you have a very, very, very strong signal, then you're sending less data. Whereas if you have a signal that's maybe similar to ATSC 1.0 today, not as strong perhaps, you can send more data. However, the point that I want to make is that if you send a signal that is exactly the same strength as ATSC 1.0 today, mm -hmm. you can get 30% more data. Okay. Than you are today. So it's more spectral efficient. We exactly. can fit more bits down the this in the same channel space. Right, but suppose you wanted to flip that on its head. Okay. And say I'm perfectly happy with the amount of data that I'm sending. Okay. On ATSC 3.0, the signal is going to be 30% stronger. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. So you're making that decision. Okay. And with ATSC 3.0, you have either a much much stronger signal or much much more data. Or somewhere in between. Okay. Okay. Now, I did want to address one negative that that is going around in a, in a rumor mill that next gen broadcasting is a backdoor way for broadcasters to charge for over the air, and that they're going to try to get into the multi-channel uh, cable business, and that's really not the case. It's going to be free over the air. Uh, today and forever, is that that's correct? That's correct. Free TV is free TV, it will always be free TV. In fact, it's required by the FCC that it is free TV. So maybe there's going to be some ancillary services or some extra bells and whistles that broadcasters might want to charge like a, for. Like maybe a, down the road a pay-per-view or something like yeah, that? Yeah, maybe like a special event or something, but the main channel is free in 1.0, it is free in 3.0, and it will always be free. Okay. Um, and I think another thing that people ask a lot is, do I have to have an internet connection for ATSC 3.0 or Next Gen TV? You do not. It's free TV. It's over the air. You don't need internet. So when you cut the cord, you can really cut the cord. And speaking of internet, this is this is internet broadcasting, isn't it? It is. You're broadcasting in an IP format, so it's over the air streaming, essentially. Is that? That's is, essentially is that what it is. Oversimplified right. way of explaining yeah. it, but. Yeah. If you think about the internet as we know it is a two-way pipe mm -hmm. where data can be delivered and collected. ATSC 3.0 broadcasting is a one-way pipe okay. and data is being delivered. Now, if you have a smart TV and you want to connect it to the internet, then maybe there's some new bells and whistles that you can get along with your over-the-air television, which is kind of fun like interactivity and some of the cool things you can do. So there'll be some extra interactive bells and whistles if you do have an internet connection, but it's not required is what you're saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. Television is free, you connect your antenna, you watch TV. Okay, okay. Just like it is today. Now today we are broadcasting in 60 markets. You just announced two more this week. And by the end of the year, we might expect maybe 70 or 80 markets going live with next gen. So the 67 markets. 67 markets as of today. 66 okay. yesterday, 67 today. <laughs> Miami went live about four hours ago. Oh, wow. So very exciting. That's one of the larger markets. Um, I'm expecting my hometown of Boston to go live this month. Okay. Um, looking forward to that because I've got my whole setup ready to go. Okay. Um, so the broadcasters are working very hard to get some of these major markets done. Okay. The, as you're probably aware, uh, the broadcasters have to work together to launch a marketplace. Okay. And the bigger markets are the hardest ones, not because broadcasters aren't able to work together, but because the spectrum is tighter. Okay. There's a lot more channels on the air, and there's a lot more moving pieces, so the, the puzzle is more complex in the bigger markets. But with Miami, Boston coming, Washington is already online, we can see that the bigger markets are, are, um, are coming. And the expectation that I've heard from broadcasters is that we will definitely have the majority of um, viewers covered by the end of this year. But I think it's important to note that the broadcasters are launching markets currently at a clip of two per month. Okay. So they launched 26 markets last year. Yeah. 26 markets launched last year. Yeah. So yeah, that's that, so that's the, like bringing heaven to earth because the spectrum's already kind of crowded. So to 
fit 10 pounds of potatoes in a three pound sack, so to speak. That's what's happening, <laughs> exactly right, yep. So we're very excited about that, and I see every indication that that momentum will continue into 2023. Okay, yep. now the number one question I get asked by customers is, I don't want to put you on the spot, but when will we start to see 4K broadcasting? Is that, do you hear any buzz from the broadcasters? I know there's not a lot of content out there right now, but do you expect within the next year or two that we'll start seeing 4K, since this system does, standard does support a 4K resolution, do you, do you expect content maybe that consumers might expect that in the next year, two years? Well, I think it's interesting because in South Korea, which launched ATSC 3.0 in 2017 for okay. the U.S., each broadcaster was given another channel. Okay. So they were able to simulcast 1.0 and 3.0, oh. and they had two channels to play with. Nice. So the 3.0 <laughs> channel, they had all the bandwidth to do 4K. And in fact, that was their major consumer message, 4K. They didn't talk about next-gen TV or 3.0 or up to that. Four because that's oh, wow. more than two, right? Yeah, yeah. Great message. In the U.S., broadcasters did not get a second channel to launch, and so we're simulcasting 1.0 and 3.0 in the same amount of spectrum that we had for 1.0 by itself. Okay. And what that makes is it makes it very difficult to do high bandwidth services like 4K. Yeah. So what we need to do, this is where Antennas Direct comes in, <laughs> if we can get more and more consumers using ATSC 3.0, then we can start to reclaim more and more bandwidth from the 1.0 signals that were required to simulcast okay. right now. So you imagine that you have one of these markets, Miami launches, that's exciting, we've got Miami. What that really means is that there's one transmitter in Miami transmitting all the broadcaster services in 3.0. Okay. All the other transmitters in Miami are still broadcasting 1.0 so that people who have 1.0 TVs can still watch TV. So what's happening is, is that until we can move more and more of that 1.0 stuff off of our bandwidth, we're not going to have enough bandwidth to do 4K 24-7. Okay. Now, that said, I know that broadcasters are thinking about what they call stunting. Oh. So thinking about doing marquee events in 4K as a special event. You know, and they okay. work with the other broadcasters in the market to say, I'm going to take up this much room. So like an Olympic event or something of that nature that could be... Exactly right. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now one of our biggest challenges as an antenna vendor is we are selling to what we call the minority, meaning only about 20% of the population is even aware of digital broadcasting. And this is since we're trying to kind of beat the drum as much as we can. And, you know, I appreciate what you and some of the other broadcasters are doing, but, you know, are you, do you feel the same way that we just don't have enough awareness of the benefits of, of, of not just next gen, but digital broadcasting in general? Or are you feeling that it's just not uh, been promoted enough or there's not enough awareness um, of, this, of the category? Um, I would say that awareness has definitely gone down. Um, you know, my generation, we grew up watching over-the-air broadcast. It was what you had. And now you get the younger generation who says, wait a minute, what is free? What is, yeah, some what people is this think free it's, TV some thing? Some people think it's, a, it's a, like a scam, like a, yeah. like a pirate. They can't, uh, it doesn't cost. compute, right? Yeah. But what's interesting about what you said about Antennas Direct promoting it, I understood that um, one of the major broadcast station groups, Scripps, has been promoting over-the-air use in the 13 markets where they're on the air with 3.0. They've been promoting it, and antenna sales have gone up 30% in those markets. Okay. That's what they're well, we saying. We love to hear that. <laughs> so, um, you're right, promotion is important. I think another thing that uh, is good to know is that here we are with this beautiful backdrop here at Consumer Electronics Show, and this backdrop is all about the consumer message. So broadcasters that are launching ATSC 3.0 or Next Gen TV have, are sharing the, the, the ability to put this message out there. Um, Pearl TV, which is a consortium of nine broadcast station groups, uh, has already put together, this is what your commercial can look like, this is what you put on your website, this is what you can put on a crawler, and so they kind of have it pre-packaged so the broadcasters who are launching Next Gen TV have a campaign package that they can just take right off the shelf and move forward with. So they did a big campaign over this holiday, they did a big campaign over the last holiday in the markets that have next-gen TV. Okay, so people who think 
broadcasting ended during the digital transition, uh, they're going to get a re-education. <laughs> they are going to get a re-education. And what's interesting is you do see the numbers of antenna use going up. People are building their own bundles with certain yeah. streaming services they want and their local over-the-air stations using the antenna. So you're watching antenna use on the rise. I think there's a tremendous amount of headroom there. That there's a lot of opportunity and that, as you're pointing out, the consumer messaging is critically important. And when the messages are out there, they respond. Yeah. I mean, we just talked to a competitor but no more than a, than a half hour ago and uh, they, they want to partner with us just to promote the category. And the antenna community, the, the category of the industry, is going to work together and, and, and not promote a specific brand of antenna because the benefits are just too great to ignore of, of over there digital broadcasting, whether you buy my brand or a Televest or somebody else, Weingard, they all make great products, mm -hmm. but so many people are missing out. You don't, you know, the, like we said, the 80% of the population that doesn't know this exists is spending maybe an extra thousand, two thousand dollars a year on on pay TV that you know they could otherwise maybe cancel or shave down and put have that money back in their pockets and that could be collectively billions of dollars in the pockets of American consumers. So uh, we kind of think we're doing the run the side of the angels. <laughs> to pay our own back, but <laughs> free sales. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And it's a great product. You know, we're just we're just gonna go out there and evangelize. You know what a wonderful thing this is, and there's no charge, and it's it's hard to believe, but you can get, you know, anywhere from 50 to 150 channels um, of digital broadcasting today. Um, we just you know tell your friends, tell your neighbors, let's get out there and, and you know and spread the spread the gospel. Yeah, isn't it funny? They they they're calling them fast channels, free oh, ever ad supported TV, right? Yeah, which is the street. Broadcast has been doing that since <laughs> the 50s, 50s right? right? So, you know, why is it free? Well, it's ad supported, yeah. of course. Yeah. So what's old is, is cool again. So, Madeline, thank you very much for giving me your, a good part of your after, afternoon. I know you're very busy, so thank you very much hey, for thank you. This coming, terrific. On, coming on the camera with us. And thank you for being part of the ATSC booth here at CES 2023. Yes, thanks for having us.